Hey everybody, we're here for a new episode of the show that is yet to be named. It's a podcast about movies where we talk about movies that we're podcasting about. I'm here with Johnny Donuts Triple Seven. I'm here with Putty Man. He's from the Gamer Podheads Network. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a network of podheads. They have like a self, yeah. like a chain link, like hands across America. I have mind. <laughs> There's a hive mind. <laughs> um, but he's the queen bee. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to be talking about Kevin Smith. Buzz, buzz. We did a ranking the view of skew universe. You can watch that. Um, mm-hmm. I'll probably link to it. I probably won't, but it's going to be on the channel. It's, it's going to be the video before this probably. So watch it and tell putty what you think about his headphones. I'm so so they're blue. We they're decided blue. We we're going to do a whole episode to talk about him because I think he needs to be talked to and about. And uh, yeah. yeah, so <laughs> Kevin Smith. Agreed. Kevin Smith, where do we begin? Well, we begin with, uh, did you guys know that I actually appeared in theaters and the, the movie screens with Kevin Smith? Because I don't know what you just said. I did. I was on the big screen. <laughs> no, I don't know what you said. Okay. I was on the big screen with Kevin Smith. So you were in a movie with him? Not necessarily, no. So he did this thing, and I did. It's, it's all in this documentary I made. He did this thing where you know how he does his Q and A's. A lot yeah. of people don't familiar that he does Q and A's. Well, he saw one time that Dave Matthews Band was promoting a thing where you could watch live their concert through all the theaters. And Kevin said, "I want to do the same thing, but I'm going to do a thing called Live from Behind." It's a Kevin Smith. It's a Kevin Smith film where it's, it's live in theaters. Sounds and great. what happens is it's going to be Q and A's through Twitter. And then they're going to do a thing called Jane Saw and Bob Get Old, which actually turned into a video, but they did the UK version. This was the Canada version I was at. And they su- you, you could submit a video to ask one question, and only one video got picked. That was me. I, they I the actually, wrong guy. The wrong yeah, no, kid screw died. you. Everyone was asking dick jokes. I actually asked him a, a real serious question. So when he went to go, this in the moment, I, like you see it in the thing, I talk about it. I even got to go, we'll talk on Twitter to Jason Muse. And I show the tweets and everything where I'm asking where my signed poster is. I literally have right here the signed poster. And this is a one of a kind poster that you can't get anywhere else. That's from Kevin Slip. Live from behind, and it was actually it's a big poster. I don't too. think it's gonna fit. No, That's it's not. not. <laughs> That's literally huge. It's literally a, a huge, and it's upside down. Yeah, it is upside down. It's literally a huge poster. Signed by them, and um, oh, was, that's a sick was, poster. I was seeing Tower and shit. I gotta get one of them. Yeah, it's actually yeah. It was filmed in Canada, and what it was was he first they did James. Was Long it Bob the Niag- Was it at the Niagara Comic Con? I no, no. This was at, just in one of the theaters. Like it was in. It was in. Let me see. It's at the bottom. It says it, but I'm, I'm going to hold on too long. But it was at. It was with AK two point seven Smodco, and it was filmed. Um, I can't read read it. I'll have to look at it in a little bit. But it wasn't. It was, it was like Ontario, I think it was in Ontario. But uh, I've anyway. never been there. So no, what happened? Me was, neither. Yeah. So what happened was, was I was in the theaters and I thought that I was just going to get it, ask a tweet question, and I get a message from the company AK Twenty Seven saying, "Your video's been picked. Your video's been picked. Respond to us now." And I'm literally saying, "I'm in the theaters. I'm freaking out. Please tell me you chose it." Then Kevin says, "All right, uh, can we go ahead and play the video?" And <sighs> there's my face on the big screen and actually ben affleck was actually in los angeles watching so even ben affleck saw my face so Poor i'm sitting here asking the question and then I, I, the, the question was um if you could host snl or be on any other show what could it be and why and he said they never picked me for snl but he said i already did the show i want to degrassi and then out of nowhere jc muse goes murder she wrote and we're like, what? He's like, I fucking right love choice. that show. Yeah, I want to be on choice. that show. I, I'd and rather that's be on Columbo, but... But he answered my question. And then what happened was I was supposed to get a poster, but I never got it. So I contacted Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith. They both led me to the person I was supposed to get to it. That company is no longer there. But I was able to get all the footage of what theater I went to, the actual uh, listing of when I actually, um, the, the, the contest, me winning it, and actually those emails when I, was, I won it. And all that. The only thing is, is the power went out at one point during the live session that they couldn't use half of the footage. So my stuff is basically in a vault with Kevin Smith. And it won't be seen except for my videos on YouTube. So you can see my video and one clip of Kevin Smith live from behind. But as far as the scene with me there, nothing's there except for what I show in my own video where like it's the clues of them talking about me winning and so on and so forth. So for me... Seeing myself in the big screen, and then all of a sudden, both Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes answer my question. 
if it wasn't for meeting me, me also meeting, me also meeting Word Al Yankovic, I could have died right there. Like I was like in heaven, and that's why I, I, I had to bring that up because oh, we lost him. He'll oh, find no. his way back. Just He'll finish find his your way story. Back. Just finish your but anyway, story. Anyway, so my whole point to the whole thing is I finally got the poster and I decided because no one knew about this existing, I had to make a documentary. I literally made an 18-minute documentary about it and it only got like 400 something views, but it's because nobody knows about it. And I literally had to name it something like Live from Behind, the Kevin Smith film you've never seen. And it was something that I would say to this day that that a lot of people probably will never get to experience like I did having a moment like that. You know what I mean? So that's why I wanted to bring it up. And that's why I wanted to have, be able to make sure everyone gets to see it. Well, the fact that it's called live from behind basically doesn't help its own cause. I'm not going to yeah. lie to you. <laughs> yeah, right? um, it's not something that anyone's going to be searching. I think. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, not on here, maybe on Pornhub. You should try <laughs> putting it up there and see if that happens. I mean, there's always a good chance of that. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see if uh, he got lost. I may have to save this one and then come back. Well, yeah, he said he'll be back. Just give him a second. Okay, so anyways, um, so uh, like I met uh, Jason Muse. Oh, nice. And uh, I've told you this probably like 14 times. And, you know, he told me he eats ass. All right, on, he wrote it on a picture <laughs> for me. So, you know, I was like, cool, just not my ass. But like... Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, he was really cool and... I remember not wanting to meet him because I was like, I don't want to meet any of my heroes. I'm going to meet him and it's not going to be the same. And right. like, I, I hate doing, um, I hate meeting the people that do autographs and stuff at events. Oh, really? Because it's like, it's not uh, somewhere you want to meet it. There's a lineup of 200 people behind yeah. you. There's 200 people in front of you. They're tired. They don't want you. They don't care about you. Huh. They're just there to sign autographs, but he was just by himself, just chilling. So I walked up to him and I was like, Hey, what's up? And he's like, Oh, you got to talk to her first. So I talked to the girl and she told me like, what do you want to buy? Cause I didn't know I had to buy things. I've never done that. Yeah. Right. And I was like, okay. And then he, nobody was there. So he literally just talked to me for like 25 minutes, me and my friend. Wow. And he, he just like, we were just, I don't even, I don't remember it. It's a complete blank. All I have is all the stuff that happened <laughs> while we were there, like the pictures and stuff. But yeah, well he was a cool guy. Well, see, another thing, too, is we were talking about Reboot with the last video and everything, and, that, and this is another reason why Reboot really hit my, why I did still love it so much, is that, and this is a whole other story, I won't get into this, but I actually met Method Man and Red Man um, at a concert, and at the time, uh, I didn't know that a friend of mine's br cousin was the DJ for them, so I ended up meeting them and getting autographed on the movie How High, and then, of course, what is one of the things in Reboot? How high? So it's like for me, it's like full circle. I did that, that all this is happening. Then, then of course, reboot was in the same theater. I had that all the live behind me stuff. I'm back. Sorry, I'm guys. Back. <laughs> I'm okay. back. Sorry, guys. My PC a lot there. crashed. My uh, PC literally crashed. You still oh, on that no. same story, buddy? No, well, I yeah. already talked about Jason Mewes eating ass, so we're past that. Okay. We're yeah, past we're kind of combining that and everything because I was talking about also how I met nothing in Red Man, how it all fit into the reboot stuff too, as well. So it's like, it's like, it's so much, it, it just comes together in it. And it's just so great to be able to say that I was a part of all that in some way, even with, you know, just with Kevin Smith and then them on the other end. You know what I mean? So, well, I'll share mine. I'll share my Kevin Smith story then. I got to meet Kevin Smith a few years right before Yoga Hosers came out. Um, he did a Jay and Silent Bob Get Old at the Niagara Comic Con, and I got to meet him as well there. And uh, I told him, when I told him flat out, I said, dude, I've been waiting 20 years to meet you. He just looked at me, started to cry, and gave me this huge hug. Like, I got this huge hug from Kevin Smith. It's something that's going to stick with me forever. Oh, okay, like, never mind. My video's not good. <laughs> he is such, he's such a wonderful, wonderful human being. Like, you see what you see on screen and whatnot, but that genuine love for the for his fellow man is genuine. That is so, so true. That's that's like and with my uh, Jason Muse, that's the closest I ever got to Kevin Smith. When I told yeah. him, when I walked up to him, he's like, "I'm like, listen, I'm like, you're a fucking legend," and he's like, just looking at me, and he's like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "No, you don't get it." I'm like, "You're a fucking legend, bro." I'm like, "You're the coolest person like ever," and he's yeah. like. He's like, oh my God, thank you. And then that's why on my picture that I have, they're only supposed to write one catchphrase. He, my whole thing is just covered in like catchphrases because he was just like, I'm like, right, can you write Snoochie Boochies? He's like, yeah, he wrote I <laughs> ass. And like, yeah, and he was just cool. And like I said, I blacked yeah. out 
the I, I stood there with him for 25 minutes just talking with him and me him and my buddy and i blacked yeah. out the whole thing yeah i know he just gave me this huge hug he started to cry he's like i'm so happy that you got to meet me and it's like it's something that's going to stay and he signed my he signed my dvd copy of clerks the animated series that's <laughs> legendary <laughs> this is the thing though when everyone everyone's giving this oh he's just a really nice guy uh let's give him more credit for what he does kind of shit for Zack snyder listen kevin smith made a we can say seven but let's say arguably five really good movies yeah and and Zack snyder has one maybe mm -hmm. and we're praising to get extra long cuts from him give me the extended cut of clerks with all yeah, the extra with the, with the, yes. with the, the final scene let me get the final scene that we never got you know what yeah, i mean like, you know, so. give me yeah. that G give me i'd give rather me, give me the three the hour cut of reboot yeah, yeah. Give, give me the three hour cut of reboot where he and just it's just him with his buddies and like hanging having out. a good time yeah, yeah. and I, I don't know both of you guys don't know about this too but i'm gonna i'm gonna point this out because i have the mall rats right here and everything another great thing that he does that a lot of other people don't do is he literally goes out of his way to sign his merchandise so you can purchase it and actually have his autograph even and if he doesn't charge them, a lot no, he doesn't. Little these no. features, though. He always has like a, 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 it's just the, the what makes him so such a great person is that he knows the pop culture of the fans and he knows what 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 we want in return. So he gives back to us more. Like to think about him sitting in the um the, the secret stash and just signing so many things so he can make sure that you get a copy of but it. But that's you know what I'm telling you. His he understands his following. He's not preaching to you some mm -hmm. kind of cult thing he just understands that you love him and he doesn't know why so all the yeah. least he can do is give back to you exactly and it's like i told yeah. you that i told you about the dvd mall rats when they put them up remember i, I told yeah, you I right know. away i was the one that freaked out i was like i had to I, have it i bought i have like i have the little cards that are like uh pumpkin escobar three four oh five like i got the, the, I got the batman cards. comics too like he even signs yeah, his i have the autographed green hornet yeah. comics i have i have a bunch of stuff for him because i just buy it on on uh, secret stash and, and yeah. there's you can get cool things from him, right? And mm -hmm. and I appreciate that about him. He didn't just like he doesn't lock himself off for him from his fans. And yeah, he's just he a big nerd. His his whole yes. thing is just that's what he wants to do, right? Well, that's yeah. but that's even with the situation. Like I've never put so much into a video in, in general for someone, but because of the passion <laughs> it was just for him, it's it's like it's it's. It's there's no, the only other person I could say that I when I genuinely met him he was the same way would be Weird Al Yankovic like there's only few yeah but he just world. seems like that right at surface level like yeah, Weird Al yeah. just seems like that yeah you're gonna get me as soon as you see me exactly yeah. and that's the whole thing I like about like like people like that like celebrities like that because they realize we have a they have a small audience but that audience is so dedicated that they understand guess what I want to preach to that audience because they're the reason why I'm here they're the reason why I do this I'm not gonna just ignore them you know what i mean and i think that's the reason why stuff like cop out didn't do so good is because in those ways well we have other reasons we've seen the stories about bruce willis and all that anyway. yeah but um but my whole point to the whole thing is is you could tell even though if he does slip up even like we talked about with reboot there's still the love there no matter what you know what i mean even yeah when it does mess up you still see the love like hey i did try it may not be what it was before but I did want to show some passion. And sometimes he kind of goes off the rails, but you know what? It's not so much that he's not at least trying to, to go to some kind of fan. You know what I mean? Even though Tusk or Red State might not be for some people, there were those podcast fans that were like, yes, I can't wait. You know what I mean? And that's the whole point to it. You know what? Touching, I want to touch on Red State. Red State, I don't think we would have had Far Cry 5 if we didn't have Red State. Red State is 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 not very like bad. It's it's a, it's a great movie, movie in my eyes. It's a very for what it was was mm -hmm. an excellent film. You had Richard Parks. You had John Goodman in this film. Like mm -hmm. when nobody would cast Richard Parks in a film anymore, Kevin Smith put him in two of them. Yeah, yeah. and not to mention that what made that movie so great was there was the expectations of where you go in and like, you didn't know what you were going to get. You know what I mean? So when you came in, there was so many points where you're like, what the hell is going on? And it twists you and all of a sudden it twisted on you. And you're like, holy crap, then something else happened. Like even the ending to this day is still make me go, what the hell did I just see? Like, yeah. I still don't understand the whole thing with the sirens. I don't, I still don't know. I still am yeah, up in the air. Never it's like, it's open. That. Yeah. But it's, that's what makes it so great. And I feel like, it's, it, I, for me, that movie kind of has like the good time of when Shyamalan was a good filmmaker. You know what I mean? Not it the horrible that, Shyamalan. No, yeah, I know it has that. It has that flavor to it. I understand. Yeah. yeah. 
And so that's the reason why I feel like you got to, I understand why Kevin wants to go off the rails sometimes and go away from the view askew universe because it's like, he's a director. He wants to be creative. You know what I mean? He doesn't and want to be and I understand yeah. that, but when you have full creative control of your own property and people are willing to back it at, like, I'm not saying stop or don't stop or don't, like pursue what you want to do to be your creative outlet. Right. Cause I don't just want to do movie talks. I like to do hockey. Right. That's why I yeah. do it. But, and that's why we do video games and stuff and the wrestling one. And, and, you know, yeah, we did the wrestling stuff but on my channel. Yeah. I, wish was, I, I, loved, I wish I was there for that one. It really well, we was good. Another like one, one day. Don't worry. We'll do more. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. Is, when this is your bread and butter and you can do it so well, why would you just completely stop? Like he didn't have to do it every year, but you could have had like every five years you dropped the movie because he didn't do it. He lost the rights to mall rats. Then he lost yeah, the true. rights to dogma. And then he, he, I don't know if he lo- lost the rights to Jane Silent Bob, but he owns the rights to make a Jay and Silent Bob movie, which is like, it doesn't make sense to me. There was some whole thing like that, which is how we got reboot. Yeah. He doesn't he, technically have the right. He he is working on Clerks 3, though. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Okay. It's, still showing, it's, it's still showing that he is working on Clerks 3. But I do want to say think this. I, I, okay, I, I sympathize with that. I understand that. But here's the reason why I kind of understand why it sucks that it happened, but why I have to be on Kevin's side about this. And, I, and this is just basing on other things I've seen, with like even Marvel and all that. And here's my thing. You, you can't push somebody to make something if they're not inspired to make it. You know what I mean? And if they're going to make something, we're going to end up, like you said, with something like Reboot. Like, it feels like it's being pushed out there so he can make sure he puts the film out there. And a prime example is this Fantastic Four movies. Like, oh, we have to keep the license. Let's make a movie. And it turns out to be making a bad movie because there was no heart in it. That's why I kind of feel like might have been happening with that situation. Is like, the I heart don't. wasn't there because Kevin wasn't just ready to make it, you know? I don't think it wasn't him not having his heart in the right place i think it was him he didn't know what he was supposed to do next and he felt he didn't want to get be known as the guy who just makes those movies but later on which now which you could see it in reboot you can feel his i'm so passion happy returning yeah back. the yeah. passion's you returning can feel it is that i should have been doing this the whole time i never should yeah. have left here i could have made other movies that just take place in the universe where you can have a jane silent bob cameo for two seconds like chasing amy or whatever you know he does it in the in the dc television series yeah exactly yeah yeah right but, but yeah i i get it I, I guess maybe even in some ways for him especially like i call it the podcast series with the podcast series it, it, it was one of those things i just felt like he and, and, and mentally it would be for me like you would have to just take a break from it sometimes you know what i mean and i felt like that's what he was trying to do he wanted to take a break and do something a little bit different and he did it and some people like it some people don't i actually like tusk I, he I, had I, his I he like had it. his fingers in too many pies at the time i know for a fact that johnny donuts has an opinion on the podcast thing yes that the, the, po- the podcast yeah. is let, where it, everything went wrong yes i honestly do um he loves that podcast but that's the thing I don't know if the people listening to his podcast were trolling him when he put out the whole the thing. Tusk Tusk. thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I actually didn't mind Tusk. Um, you know, just, just the Fleetwood Mac song alone makes the movie <laughs> right. Obscure Fleetwood Mac track, but you know, yeah. um, but I like, that's the whole internet generation, especially at the time when that podcast came out, you know, podcasts were huge. Like, like those audio podcasts, like at in the early to mid to like 20, 2005, whatever it was like that, you, they were a dime a dozen and there were just so many. And he had so many going on that I don't know, like I said, if people were trolling him or not. Yeah. And that's why the whole thing of Tusk came out. And then he did yoga hosers. And then he did, uh, and then he was talking about doing moose jaws and like, I know, I know like, they never got done. Like, and that never got done. Like, I think because there was so much negative feedback to Tusk that he just kind of lost the passion for movie making for a True. while. And, and so that's, that's my he personal opinion. He, he was not that guy. He's a 90s, 80s guy who, yes, he does know technology, obviously. He has podcasts yeah. and stuff, but he didn't understand how the internet worked. You could tell it was just like, fuck you, dude. I dare you to make this movie. And then yeah. he made it, and people were like, I cannot believe you made this movie. And then, uh, to me, my opinion, and like, uh, like I don't hate him for this or anything. What he should have done was own it. He's like, yeah. fuck you guys. 
I may just. I at least I at least yeah. appreciate that he admits that he wasn't trying to make a good movie. He knew it was going to be stupid. There's two things I I don't like though. He went forward with yoga hosers for the one specific purpose that he was going to put his daughter in it, and he wanted to get her out there. And I think yeah. that was wrong because the movie was so bad. And he should have just, if you weren't going to make all three, you should have just stopped after the first one because yoga hosers is bad. And number yeah. two, I don't care if it's a joke or it's like lighthearted or whatever. Those movies to me are just making fun of Canadians. It's not even like poking fun. It's like legit, like you're calling us idiots or something. Yeah. And that's like how I, as much I get as he says he loves those, Canada. Yeah. Mm, and it's true. weird because I don't get like that, a playful vibe from the story. And maybe he means it like that, but it doesn't feel like that to me. It feels yeah. like literally just two hours of you making fun of Canadians, like well, the I'm, whole, like the whole aboot thing. I don't say aboot; I say well, about. No. Well, well, I'm, like, I'm, you know I'm, what I mean, like. But I'm, I'm going to say this though. The, the thing is, is I can understand where he's coming from, just so I can kind of, because since we're going from different countries and everything, so I'll go ahead and say this: there's a whole stigma of like, howdy, folks, you redneck, and we're dumb. I live in the south. I, by, you guys know me. I'm not this country bootleg redneck. You know what no. I mean? But that's my whole point. That's a stigma that a lot of people get. And that's what people think of America as well. So it's really getting into a cultural thing that I get. Uh, there's a lot of movies that do that when it makes fun of like my culture as, as, a, as a, a country. And I'm like, that's not how we are. But I, but I have to look at it this way is there is a misunderstanding in that way. So and that's why I kind of defend him because maybe because he did make it for America. So that's what America thinks in the whole joke. And I can understand why that's that's the you know that's hateful and everything you know what I mean or why that's despised on. So I because I'm 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 one of those that's always been open you know I love Trailer Park Boys I, all that I, I'm I'm one of those that sincerely looks at other things like I, if it wasn't for him I would have never looked at Degrassi and found out that holy crap uh, Drake was in a wheelchair I had no idea. Well, let's until, be like, real for, for that's not Degrassi. No, no, I get it. Degrassi Joey is... with a fedora on. A... <laughs> yeah, but that's my whole point. But that's my whole point. The thing is, it made me do the research to look into things. You know what I mean? It did intrigue Spike me. Spike has a baby it. and gets AIDS. <laughs> I have no, I have no idea who the characters. All I know is he fell in love with one of the the, the, the they cast. He likes or, original Degrassi. That's Zit why. Zit is yeah, the yeah. greatest band in the world. <laughs> he he loved original Degrassi. So when they made Degrassi again, he wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. To, to do but, it but, but, but again, yeah. I, i'm not saying like i'm sitting here and i'm crying because of what he did but it it stops being poking fun at some point and it's like this movie's still going and you're still it, it's not it's like it's getting old now yeah at this it's point. getting it's, old it's getting like, a little long yeah. and to us it's like okay we get what he means but do does everybody else do, do the, all the americans know that it's poking fun or do they taking this literally like this is you know, what he's Canadians from the think. north. He's not but, from but, the south. He's literally lives right yeah. near us. Like he would know. But like, see, but that's the funny part. See, that's the thing. Uh, yeah, if I, if I was uh, talking to some of the people I know here that actually are the typical redneck, then they'd be like, hey, "That's funny way he did that." They were doing that. Me, I understood it. You know, what I mean, I understand where he's coming from. I didn't think I didn't think it was treated to be mean, or I didn't think that that's how can uh, people from Canada are. You know, what I mean, of course, yeah. you guys know I know that, but it's just that's my whole point is. I can see where you guys are coming from on that, but I also have to make sure that it's aware that that's not like the only time that's happened where even on the other spectrum, uh, people look at it the other way and go, that's just funny. But I'm like, dude, I hate that because they're making fun of Americans and that's not how, that's how people see yeah. America as. You see what I'm saying? So it, that's the reason why I, I when I, I saw this, I, I, I guess because I didn't see it because I did see it as a joke because I kind of have to look past those things sometimes because of how also America's looked at in that way. You know what I mean? Fair point. And, yeah, and so that's the reason mean, why I'm not trying to total defend him and say that yeah. that's the best thing he did ever. It's just, you know. But I, then I, again, I, to counterpoint that, Kevin Smith has been to Toronto many, many oh, times. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And Toronto is not this backwoods Canadian out of nowhere city. We're a techno, we are the biggest city in Canada. We're we are the, the third most, biggest city, city in North America, not counting right. Mexico City. We are the second biggest financial capital in north america next to new york like one of the busiest cities in north america mm -hmm. so i don't understand where this whole a boot and a and all this came. that's very much trailer park boys and not indicative of this city in particular it's not even right. like trailer park boys no it's okay. not even mm -hmm. like new fees that's like deep yeah south version for us like in saskatchewan and like alberta Oshawa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oshawa is like a just crackhead. And, and what's it's what's funny when we talk about Hamilton this, I will, say, I will say this, at least look at it this way. 
we, you know, at least on, on your end, you didn't have a, a, a president that ended up signing capital shit and literally Listen, showing how bad our country is. No, but we have Justin Trudeau. About, if, yeah, if, true, if that's true. the only thing you're worried about in the history of America, <laughs> then we have a lot of bigger problems. Well, no, no, no. But I'm just saying, like, I'm sitting here saying, oh, man, I okay, hate but, how we're looked at in this country, and all of a sudden, look at it. That's what happens in the capital. Yeah, that's, but that's really what happens. Anyways... So to move on from this, I think yeah. both. I'll, I'll let you make moose jaws uh, yeah. and see what Go happens. Oh, of course, like yeah. I don't. I didn't like Tusk. I don't think it was awful, awful, but I didn't like it. And I think Yoga Hosters was terrible. Oh, I agree. It's still, um, still horrible. That's his worst film. Oh, I agree. Out of I'm, all Yoga the Hosers. films that he's done, I think Yoga Hosters. Uh, Jersey is Girl was pretty bad. No, no, I could deal with Jersey Girl way more. Over I'll take Hosers. Jersey Girl just because yeah. of George Carlin. Okay, yes. Yeah. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll let you have that. Come on, let us see the cast. And come on, and come on. The, the <laughs> Cop, Cop Out is really bad. Cop Out's bad, but then yes. again, Cop Out had rewrites and like it's been and Bruce Willis and Bruce Willis being a diva. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, you so, should have just gave me Sean William Scott, which I know you don't like, but you should have just know. gave me Sean William Scott and Tracy Morgan, and I would have watched that oh, movie. Yeah, see, that's the thing. That's the reason why I, I went to see it. Was what else is in it? What's movie? her name? Oh, the the was it the same girl who played Encarnacion in Nacho Libre? The one who was in Army of the Dead is that? Yeah, the same I think so. Uh, Anna and the uh, Yeah, I can't remember. I think yeah. Uh, uh, but anyways, listen. Okay, Zach and Miri is actually good. Yes, right? it's a it's a funny movie. If yes. you but I never do. You, I want you to know this. I saw this in theaters, and I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. I saw this in theaters, and I didn't even know Kevin Smith made it until I bought the DVD. And on the back, it said Kevin Smith. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm a like, Kevin Smith. Yeah, it's not set in New Jersey. It's in Pittsburgh. It, it doesn't yeah. feel like a Kevin Smith movie at all. I just Jason Mewes is in it, and I just figured, oh, Jason well, Mewes is in the movie. Uh, yeah, and Randall, Jeff yeah. Anderson. Yeah. Jeff yeah. Anderson's but, in it too. But, but but I have to say, I will love that I, because of Jason Mewes. I've actually one time in my life actually got well. It's a little getting personal, but I did say the line to somebody saying, "You gave us, someone but. a Dutch rudder." No, no, I actually, I, I no, I did no, no. He <laughs> just said it. That's live. You guys saw that live on the podcast. <laughs> Dutch rudder. Hey, what, what did you say? What was the line you Sorry, said? Sorry, it was the. Oh, it was the uh, let us fuck. Oh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I still love that scene where he's like, where they shut off the water. It's like use the water from the toilet. There's poo in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a good movie. Uh, it is. It is. I, I, and it has I'm, a big cast. Yeah. Um. And I worked at Starbucks for about six years, so I understand when he was like, "What do you want?" Well, uh, too bad, three fifty cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and I'll, I gotta tell you something. As someone who goes to Starbucks a lot, but like I'm not a Starbucks person. Every time I go there, I'm like, "Do you have that drink with like the the stuff?" And like the it's like peach. Oh, the peach iced tea, quap da, quap alu, drop, drop, I'm like, yeah, that Whatever. one. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> like, how am I supposed to remember that fucking name? It has like 12 names. You want it with lemonade? Like, well, no. <laughs> uh, no, but okay. So uh, we're good. We're getting close. So here, I just yeah. want to talk about the go back to the original universe. Um, I want to talk about Clerks 2. So I saw Clerks 2 when it first came out with my ex-girlfriend. I remember it vividly. The same one that we went to watch Nacho Libre with Alexander. Um, and i saw it first day it was for my birthday i was so happy uh and then i was so disappointed and i didn't learn to like the movie like i still don't think it's one of his best movies but i learned to like it more as i got older because i understood what it's about it yeah. everything about it is closure it's book ending what you've learned here and he doesn't understand how to so he's trying to give you like these little things like the speech and like uh talking to the wife what's his name not randall fucking whoa my brain just turned his off. wife no the guy not randall the other guy has a wife dante dante oh brian yeah. Man, and, and i got like, to meet brian o'halloran too he's awesome guy too oh like nice, you nice. see it you see it in that and jane Sell and bob even like have like this sort of closure and they're hilarious in that movie by the way even though jay looks nothing like jay this is the point where you jay started looking like a friggin' alien that the you drug, don't yeah. recognize yeah. him anymore and uh, i just think it, it works and like the, the best part of the movie is there's only one uh 
trilogy and it's of the Jedi or whatever. There's only oh, one yeah. return and it's of the and Jedi. It, and I still to the There's only one return. It's walking. not of the king. Yeah. It's of the Jedi. I mean, when he so when he does the three walking things and then the guy in the background's like fucking a. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally. That uh, I think no, that's a different guy I'm thinking of because there's the Canadian actor who was in also he was also in Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Mm-hmm. Yep, I forgot the actor's name. Oh my god, but I he's know in that. No. Yeah, but Shit. I forgot his name. But yeah, anyway, but it yeah. is going back. Uh, look, the the uh, Anna de la Rig- uh, Rigueta, that's yeah. her from Natural Libre. She was okay, in Kappa. In she it. played the the girl that was kidnapped, the Mexican girl. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, Clark's too. I feel like it. Yeah, it's. It's not as well appreciated. Um, Rosario, Rosario Dawson in that film does a fantastic job, yeah. I think, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then also like shout out to Lister Fiend and <laughs> Pillow Pants. <laughs> Pillow Pants. Um, and the one thing you can't say, you don't want to say it on the back of the shirt. You just don't want to say it, yeah, even though no, he's no. trying to bring. We're it not going to take that one back. <laughs> uh, Transformers. Shout out to uh, King Diamond. Yeah. Grandma! <laughs> <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> is it does Ben Affleck make a cameo in Clerks too? Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. He, he, he comes in the restaurant. He starts making fun of them about still working, at, 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 like you know, still doing the same thing, being a clerk and everything. Yeah. And he just like I can't remember what the lines were. It was it, unfortunately like unmemorable lines. You could tell it was just yeah. shoehorned. It felt like in there. So, but, but that's funny. what I mean. Wanda Sykes and uh, Chris Robinson in that film. Yeah, was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's like there's a lot of little gems in there. And White people do all kinds of freaky things. <laughs> it's just, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just it's a pretty it's a better movie than people remember it. Yeah, and people I don't think understood his emotion going into this and like that he wanted to close it. He was like, "I'm done with this for my whole life, and I never want to come back." And and you you feel it like I like you said. There's it that felt closure. You get I it towards closure. the end, and it keeps you get it and you get it. But then there's like this acceptance and. That that's like what I learned later. That it's not just a sad movie. There's like an acceptance and like a happiness. They're like happy to go forward. It's like a bittersweet this. kind of ending. Yeah. And where I, they I own the that. quick stop. And yeah, that one I, I really enjoyed the ending to that it's one. Like, like I said, that Randall speech made me cry. Yeah. It legit made me cry. He, like, and they do a good job. It's like, like the only reason why I'm here is because you're my best friend. I love you, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. And like when he said that to him, like that was so powerful, like to me at mm-hmm. least. It's like it's unbelievable he actually can pull it off that way too. Yeah. Like it's like it like, actually. But you meant could something. see like there was emotion in his eyes. He, like he was tearing up in that too. It might be Kevin Smith. Okay, it might be Kevin Smith and his writing and directing, but the performances he pulls out of of uh, Randall, Jeff, what's his name, Jeff Anderson, Jeff Anderson. Is, yeah, it's crazy that he never went on to do anything else. Well, you, if you actually watch documentaries, because I've watched a lot of, because uh, he actually didn't want to be involved anymore. He was kind of done with the whole thing. He it wasn't, it, he was always just helping Kevin out. It was never something that he passionately wanted to do himself. And the thing is, he would if you if you look back, he actually did not want to do Clerks too. It took Kevin several times to convince him to actually do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jeff Anderson was not an actor. Exactly. No, and that's what I mean, though. But he yeah. gives maybe the best performance of everybody in that movie. And he's so good in the animated series. Yeah. And he cares. Why are we walking like, like this? He, he absolutely <laughs> carried. <laughs> that's like the best. Remember when we did this? That The remembering episode where they keep remembering oh, yeah. that spot with the pot that drops? <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, Leonardo, Leonardo. In yeah, Clerks, well played, Clerks. He carries that movie. His, yeah. like, the dialogue is great. This, this is the thing. A lot of people will be like, oh, low budget movies blah 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 this and that and you should give them more credit because people put their heart and soul into it and i get it kevin smith did like he literally put everything into that he did but he didn't just make an okay movie the dialogue in that movie is fantastic for someone's first movie it's crazy it's like seinfeld-esque the way that it means nothing but yeah it's like on the other hand it's like really high tier it's literally a movie about two guys working in a convenience store yeah and it's like you get the introduction to Jay, Jay's is, is amazing. And like to this day, one of the funniest things I'll ever know in a movie is this the Berserker song. Okay. <laughs> Olaf, girl, uh, nice. The, uh, 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 my love it. for like, you is your buzz, like buzz, a truck berserker. So me and my brother both, I bought it from <laughs> from uh the store, Kevin Smith's store. I uh, we both bought the concert shirt. So on the front it has him singing, it says Berserker, and it has the dates on the back, like the concerts. <laughs> nice. just, Olaf. And, yeah, that's like this is my cousin Olaf from like Germany. <laughs> Girls think rockers oh. hot. <laughs> yeah, oh, and man. I don't know, man. Do you get that yeah. whole line about making like a circus seal? And it's like 
they just did it so well. And he, his whole career was just like a smooth run, I think, until Clerks 2. And then everything after that went downhill yeah. for him. But even, well, even the first three movies, the way they're connected with uh, the funeral of that girl. Yeah. 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 It all and happens funny. within a three And they day... don't even show you that part in Clerks. No. If you, you get the X edition, the Clerks X, and yeah. then you can see it's, the it, animated it, clip where it wasn't shows that the, that. Wasn't it called Clerks the Lost Scene? Wasn't that the one you guys referred yeah, to? Yeah. 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 But you can only see that in Clerks X. The snowball. I think it was yeah. called the Snowball Edition, wasn't it? Yep. 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 Yeah. But see, I did want to go back because the whole Clerks 2 thing got a lot of slack because people said it wasn't true. And I can understand why, because Clerks 2 definitely had the feel of more like the James Solid Bob tone. And mm-hmm. you could definitely tell that was in there. And I think what a lot of fans were hoping for was not this straight comedy because like I mean, the Clerks had comedy, but there was a lot more depth in it as far as like, you know, as far as like the way they talked with each other between Randall and Dante. You know what I mean? Yeah. I do kind of see why Randall, that, that was kind of messed up with Clerks too because there you got to remember James Fall Bob didn't have as much focus on the first clerks you know what i mean yeah as much as they did in Dante Randall and the, and then of course uh, Dante's relationship with two girls we we didn't really get that same formula with clerks too which is still a good movie um, that's not me downfalling it but i can understand some of the hardcore fans that were just about yeah. clerks that are like I didn't think I it think it's sequel. opposite. So as fast as I can, because we're both running out of yeah. time. I think well, the difference is that you had clerks, everyone loves clerks, but everyone moved on. So for it's been so long since what we got in clerks. You have this expansion of the universe, meeting these new characters. Jane Salapov have Jane Salapov became like bigger characters. Icons. Now they've been pushed to the side. This movie's a single location, entirely like filmed movie, which we hadn't seen since Clerks. So what people were expecting to get Jane Silent Bob strikes back and didn't get it i don't think people came into this and got the vibe of that and that's why they didn't like it i feel like they went so back to the original formula of clerks and just talking for two hours that like like the scene with rosario dawson and him in the office when they're in the room that's like great dialogue and people wanted to see them go places and it's like no this is not that movie we're going to be stuck here for two hours talking and we're literally about to run out of time the only time they leave is the go-kart scene yeah exactly which is the equivalent of playing hockey on the roof. Which to me, that's the equivalent of the that would have been the funeral, the, the funeral scene in the other movie. Let's just yeah. screw this, close down, and let's leave. All right, okay. Well, that's all I have. You guys, let us know your thoughts on Kevin Smith in the bottom. Thank you for coming, Putty uh, JD. We'll put their stuff in this in the uh, comment thing with the biography stuff. Description. Anyways, Kate, okay, in the prescription, we'll prescribe you some drugs. Okay, thanks for watching. <laughs>